One of my favorite ways of interacting with Cloudinary is using the Node.js SDK, but how do you use Node inside of a React app? Well, up until now, you really couldn't, but the game's changed. Here's how we do it with server components. So we're gonna use the Node SDK in order to build a little image gallery where we're gonna just list out all of the images inside of one of our accounts, where we're gonna extend that by giving it the ability to search, such as if I wanted to search space inside of all my images, we can see those results all using the SDK. Now, better yet, we're going to see how we can make a little bit of magic happen using server actions where we can submit that form for the search query and push that through to the server request in order to render those different results based off that search. Now, to start up this project, I created a little skeleton here where I have a search form, I have a clear, which we're going to dynamically add depending on if we have a query, and we're going to have a bunch of images listed out inside of a grid. In order to easily scaffold this, I used Tailwind Elements, which allowed me to copy and paste some different elements, including my image gallery itself, as well as the search bar, which has a few different options that we can work with. We can see that if we look in the code, I'm going to be working out of page.tsx, which is under the root of the app directory, which is going to be our homepage. But we can see that inside of the file, there's really nothing else in here right now except a bunch of HTML and the class names for the Tailwind. Now, inside of my Cloudinary account, I uploaded a bunch of images already that I have from other different projects, but I'm going to particularly work inside of my My Image Gallery folder. You can really work inside of whatever folder or location that you want, but ultimately, you're going to want to have a list of different images. So go ahead and upload those to your account. But ultimately, I want to take all these and I want to add them onto my page. And to do that, we're going to use the Node SDK, which allows us to easily work with Cloudinary inside of a Node environment including being able to do things like manage and upload and really whatever you need to do with your Cloudinary assets. But to start off, we're gonna to wanna to install this SDK. So we're gonna run npm install Cloudinary right inside of our terminal. And once it's done, we can spin back up our development server. Where once it's installed, the first thing we wanna do is actually configure Cloudinary inside of our project. So I'm gonna use this import statement to import v2 as Cloudinary. And I'm gonna paste it in right at the top of my project. And then I need to configure my instance of Cloudinary. So I'm going to run cloudinary.config. And then inside, I'm going to want to add my cloud name, my API key, and my API secret. Now, rather than writing these right inside of the configuration, I'm going to store these as environment variables. So inside of the root of my project, I'm going to create a new file called .env.local. And inside, I'm ultimately going to want to create three different variables. I'm going to create my Cloudinary cloud name, my API key, and my API secret. And if we'll notice that I'm appending next public to my cloud name, because later, as we'll see, we want to have that accessible inside of the application, which could also be client side. So we want to make sure that this is available to use throughout the app. But in order to get those values, we can navigate over to our programmable media dashboard, we're here, we're gonna be able to see our cloud name, our API key, and our API secret. So we can just start copying and pasting these values in, including the cloud name and all the other keys to ultimately make sure we have all of our environment variables set. And once those are set, we can head back into page.tsx where we can configure each of those in order to grab it from the environment variable file. So at this point, we're ready to actually start using the SDK where we have a couple options for how we get all of our resources, including the admin API, where we can actually hit the resources endpoint, but we're gonna actually use the search API because we're gonna eventually add a search to this. Now, if we actually go down to the search method, we can see that we can do this by easily running cloudinary.search. We can then execute that command, which we can then use as a promise to get those results. So at the top of my home component, I'm gonna set up my results, which is gonna be equal to await cloudinary.search. We're gonna also pass in expression, which for now we're gonna just leave blank, but then we're gonna run execute at the end of that, which is going to trigger that search. But as we can see, we actually have a little squiggly line here, and that's because we're currently trying to use await inside of a normal function, where what we wanna do is we wanna set up our home component to actually be an asynchronous function. That way we can use that nice async await syntax. But to see how this works, let's actually console log out the results. And if we refresh the page and ignore some of these errors where this is just because I must have not have updated the SVG that I was pasting in, but what we'll actually not see is the console log. And that's intentional as we're not running that console log in the client. We're running that on the server as this is a server component. So what we need to actually do is look inside of our terminal where we should now be able to see our asset data from making that search. But that means we do have all that image data where we can now start to add that to the page. Now to start, I wanna destructure the resources just to make it a little bit easier for me to access. 
So let's destructure our results to resources. We're now, when we, once we have these resources, we're gonna scroll down until we get to where we wanna display our images, where particularly I'm going to add my image inside of each and every one of these little divs that I got from that Tailwind Elements. So I'm gonna say resources.map, and then for each resource, I'm going to ultimately return one of these divs and I can also go ahead and get rid of those other divs since I don't need them anymore. But then I can create a new image tag inside of that where my source is going to be resource.secure URL. I'm gonna have an alt, which I'm just gonna leave blank for now since we don't really have an appropriate uh, way of adding that. We wanna make sure that we have our width, which is gonna be resource.width as well as our height. And then we also see that we're gonna get a little TypeScript error and I'm not gonna go in too deep into TypeScript with this. So I'm just gonna say object since we're ultimately, or I probably wanna just say any, so I don't have to worry about this um, as it probably should be an object. Anyways, um, we have our resource where we're gonna be able to get all that information. Now, if we reload the page, we can start to see all those resources are now showing up on my page, but these aren't necessarily the ones that I was looking for. Remember, I wanted to show a folder, which might or might not be your use case, but I wanna show a folder because I like to try to keep all my assets organized. So this is where we can start to work with the actual expression and form our search query for working with the search endpoint. So what I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna add folder and I'm gonna set that to my image gallery, where as soon as the page reloads, we can see that I get a lot of those nice images right on the page. Now, one thing when working with these images directly from our Clannery account is it's going to give us those raw images, which is fine because that's ultimately what we're requesting. But if we start to look at these images, this one, for instance, is 6,000 by 4,000 wide. That's because this is just a bunch of unsplash images that I dumped inside of my account. But realistically, we're not gonna have the images inside of our account at the exact size that we want, which is where the power of Clannery comes in, where we can start to dynamically transform our images to only the sizes that we need. Now we could probably use the Node SDK and add some transformations to our images that way, which is certainly a good way if you wanna just stick with that. But instead we're gonna use Next Cloudinary, which is a way that we can get some first class support for some amazing Cloudinary features right inside of Next.js. So to get started, we wanna npm install Next Cloudinary. So I'm gonna run that command inside of my terminal. But as we can see under configuration, we need an environment variable, but we already set this one up because as I mentioned before, we were gonna to wanna to have that next public Cloudinary cloud name in order to access that using client components. Now this library comes with a few different features in order to make it easy to work with Cloudinary inside of Next.js, including an upload widget and a video player. But we're gonna to stick to the CLD image component, which is going to allow us to just take some advantage of some of those image transformation features. So we're gonna first import CLD image from next Cloudinary. So I'm gonna paste that in at the top of my file. And we can see in order to use CLD image, we have a few required parameters, including width, height, source, and alt, where sizes is optional, but of course we always wanna have responsive sizing. But really all we need to do is change this image tag to CLD image. Now, once we refresh the page though, we're gonna see an error where we're currently trying to use a client component inside of a server component. And I wanna make sure that that is clear where we have that separation of a server component and a client component. Now, in order to use client components inside of Next.js, all we really need to do is add use client to the top of the file. But I don't wanna do that inside of my home page. That's gonna turn this into a client component, which first of all, I don't wanna do. I wanna be able to use the node SDK inside of a server component. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a wrapper around the CLD image component. So inside of a new folder called components, I'm going to create a new file called CLD image.tsx. Inside, I'm gonna start it off by adding that use client directive, where I'm gonna create a new constant called CLD image, and I'm going to just scaffold out a new component where I'm going to ultimately export that default CLD image, but inside is where I'm going to return that CLD image component. So at the top, I'm going to cut out that import statement. I'm going to import this as next CLD image just so that I can have it nice for uh, organization and not actually have a conflicting name there, but I'm gonna ultimately return that component. I'm gonna take the props from CLD image and I'm going to spread those out onto that next CLD image component. Now, if you notice, we're gonna get a TypeScript issue here and there's probably better ways to solve this, but again, I'm just going to escape into using any, but then we can see that we're going to be able to pass in any prop that we want into the actual CLD image component. 
Now to use this, I'm going to import CLD image from my components directory where I'm gonna grab CLD image. And I'm gonna make sure that I have that capital I. Now I'm realizing the reason why I'm getting the squiggly line is because I have to actually access this from the root. So it's actually app slash component slash CLD image. But as we can see, we're already referencing that CLD image, so we don't actually have to make any changes. But once the page reloads, we can start to see our images trickle in, and they might be a little slow to load for the first time because we're loading new URLs. And if you're loading huge, huge, huge images like I am, of course they need to process fast, uh, a little bit slower the first time. But as soon as I reload the page, we can see they start to trickle in fast, even though these are huge images. Now, if I look back inside of the image and I start to inspect it, we can still see that I'm loading these images at huge sizes that are completely unnecessary for my project, such as we can see this one image here. It's rendered size is 158 by 158, yet I'm loading it at 380, 3840 pixels by 3848 pixels. Anyways, it's super huge, way more than I need. So what can we do to actually serve it at the size we need? Now there's a few ways I can do this, such as adding the sizes attribute, where if I add, since it's four columns, let's add 25 viewport width, which isn't gonna be exact, but it works for our purpose. Once the page reloads and we look at that intrinsic size, we can see that it's at a lot smaller of a size. And we can see that the source set has all those different sizes depending on the size of the viewport. Now, one thing we didn't look at is the performance of all this. So let's revert this back to image and I'm gonna also comment out the sizes where if I'm loading all these images as is, I'm currently loading 27.6 megabytes of images. That's an incredibly huge amount and completely unnecessary. Now, starting to reverse back through that reversing, I guess, let's now switch that back to the CLD image component, yet not add that size as a prop yet. Now, once we refresh the page again, we're gonna to start to see a few things, including the type is going to be AVIF for all those images. If you're inside of a modern Chrome browser, where it's going to automatically optimize the images and automatically deliver the most modern format for that browser. So by just simply changing it to CLD image alone, we're now cutting that down to 15.5 megabytes and we're still serving them at those huge resolution sizes. But now again, let's enable that sizes attribute, which is going to give us the responsive sizes. We're gonna completely cut that down even more, where now we're gonna be serving it in that AVIF format where it makes sense. But now we've taken that down all the way to 389 kilobytes. That's a huge transformation and so much less that we're needing our, our users to actually download when they're visiting our site. But I think my excitement here got ahead of myself. So let's actually get back to the use case here where we wanna make a search on these actual images, right? Now, the way that Cloud Nerding Search is going to work is it's going to take a few things into consideration where it's definitely possible that when we're searching on these, these image files are gonna just have an ID or garbage as the actual image name. But one thing that I have on all my images is I auto tag them using the Google auto tagging add-on so that I have everything that's included inside of that using AI. Now, if you already have your images inside of Cloudinary, you can always check out this auto tags feature, which you can use the image analysis using that Google auto tagging add on and apply those for each one, every, every one of your images. But you can also do this programmatically using the SDK. But now let's actually dive into building that search where we're going to use Next.js server actions, which is just to be clear, an alpha feature that's built on top of React actions. But we can see here in this example, we're going to really just define a function. We're going to make sure that we mark it as we're using the server, but then we can use the server methods like the node SDK in order to make different requests or perform different actions. Now, ultimately, the way that works is we're going to pass in that function as the action onto a form element, which is going to allow us to actually invoke that action. Now, inside of my project, the way that I'm going to handle this is I have a form where I have my search query input, and I'm going to add an action to that form, and let's call it search, where then I'm going to create my new async function called search and inside is where I'm going to perform that search action. Now I'm not going to actually make that search request inside of search. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the form data from this form. I'm going to grab that query. I'm going to just append it as a redirect to the page so that it's going to revalidate that page. It's going to then use that to hit the expression that I'm going to configure here and make the search that way. That way it's a little bit more linear for how I'm going to actually make this search request. So let's first set this up using use server. But then the way that we're going to get our form data is the first parameter is going to be this data object, which is ultimately going to be typed as form data. So what we can do is we can get the query by running data.get 
where we get it, where we're going to grab that query key from the form data. Now, ultimately, we want to pass that into the URL so that we can revalidate the page to trigger that search request. To do that, we're going to import the redirect method from next navigation. And once we have this query data, we're going to run that redirect and we're going to just simply stay on the page that we're on now, unless of course you want to redirect this to a search page, for instance, and I'm going to add a query parameter where I'm going to pass in that data query value. Now, one final thing that we need to do in order to take advantage of these server actions is actually opt into the server actions. As I mentioned, this is still an alpha feature. So we want to make sure that we add this experimental feature to our next config. So inside of our next config, we're going to set up the experimental property where inside we're going to say server actions, we're going to set that to true. But now when we try to load this page and let's search for something like rocket, we can see that the page refreshed. Now we currently show the same results because we haven't tweaked that search request at all, but we now see that query parameter in the URL. So let's actually start to build this expression. So I'm going to say let expression is equal to, and we're going to start off with this folder of my gallery. So let's set that as a string. I'm going to then pass in that expression as the value. But we ultimately want to say if we have a query, which we're going to set up in a second, we want to append to this expression. We're going to say expression is equal to expression. And we're going to say ands. We're going to say our search of query. Now, the nice thing with using server components, we can pretty easily get that query parameter. So the first argument of our home props is going to give us the search params, which we need to make sure we type this and let's call this an object and search params. I'm just going to call this any for now, but inside the Next.js documentation, you can find a better way to actually type this out. But now we can say inside of search params, which is just going to be an object, we can say that this query constant query is equal to search params dot query. I'm going to move that above just for organizational sake. But just to reiterate what's happening, we're grabbing this query from our search params, which we appended using that server action. Now, once we have that, we're going to append it dynamically to our expression, our search expression, which we're going to pass into that Cloudinary search request. And we can already see once the page updates that it has that rocket now. But let's go back to the home page. And if we make a new search, such as what if I search for a guitar, we're going to be able to see that we get that image with a guitar. Or if we search for something else like rocket again, we get the rocket. If we search for cat, because I guess it didn't detect that image, that's not going to show up. But if I search for space, we see all the images that kind of look like space, even though this space jellyfish, is that a space jellyfish? It might be, but we get the images that kind of deal with space. Now, another method that we can use for these server actions is the clear, where if we have a query and only if we have a query, we want to be able to clear that query. So first of all, we're going to take that query and we're going to scroll down. And if we have it, we're, or rather if we, yeah, if we have a query, that's the only time we're going to actually show that clear button. But on this form where we hold that clear, we're going to add another action of clear where I'm going to just duplicate this search one. I'm going to call it clear. And, but this time we're not going to use that form data. We're just going to simply send it back to that root page. So now once I hit clear, we can see it goes back to the initial page. Now, this is a simple use case of server actions. This might not even be the best use case for uh, using this kind of functionality, but it's a simple way to start to illustrate what's actually happening in that process of using the server actions. And again, I do want to make sure that it's clear that these are an alpha feature, so it's super prone to breakage, but it's fun to start to explore what different APIs that we're going to have available. And ultimately, the fact that now that we have these server components, it's much easier to be able to use different SDKs like the Node SDK for Cloudinary in order to easily grab our assets, manage our assets, or do whatever we want to do inside of that same React environment that we know and love. There's so much functionality to explore in the new app router that I feel like I'm really only scratching the surface. What, what's your favorite part of the new app router features? Is it server actions? Is it something else? Let me know in the comments. If you want to explore other new app router features, check out my video where I show you how to create a sitemap, an RSS feed, and even a static JSON file using the static route handlers and that first class sitemap support. And if you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up, subscribe, and click that little notification bell for future web dev content. Thanks for watching.